Hi everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Steve Simpson and welcome to this week's blog. Uh, recorded in London and rather dark, dismal midwinter afternoon, so I hope wherever you are, you have uh, rather more sunshine than we're getting here. Um, but at least it's not raining. Now, you may remember uh, two or three weeks ago, I, in my blog, I mentioned a, un uh, a new venture I was going to do, which is the the video challenge. I didn't call it that, but one of the readers did, and that's as good a name as any. And I invited uh, anybody who was interested to write in, give me details of their biggest uh, problem or frustration. And on video, I was going to give them the best suggestions that I could come up, come up with for them to experiment with. Why did I do this? Um, I did it to have some fun, really. Uh, I've written several books. I've written many articles and uh, given many presentations and uh, whilst I enjoy all of that I would rather deal with real problems than uh, imaginary ones that I've had to uh, dream up from somewhere. So the first person to take me up on this offer was a gentleman called Andy and um, I know that he's bought at least one of my books before and he's been a subscriber on my list for a number of years now. That's about all I know about him. So I'm just going to read a few more details of what Andy wrote in about. He says, hi Steve, um, I'm 65 years old. Uh, I'm still working part time. My golf handicap is 24 and I would like to get it down to single figures by this time next year. Well, putting that into, if you don't know much about golf, basically uh, he wants to get his handicap down to nine, which means that when he plays 18 holes of golf, his handicap will give him nine shots back. At the moment, he has 24, so the difference is 15 shots. So he has to find a way to um, shaving six, uh, 15 shots off his score, which is almost one shot a hole. Now, um, that's a tough challenge. It's not impossible. Uh, but it's a tough challenge. So I needed to know a little bit more about this. Um, first of all, I'd need to know about his health because there are plenty of golfers of his age who aren't very fit and healthy and yet they play very good golf. Um, they would never be tour players, um, but uh, for club golfers, um, as long as you don't have anything too serious physically, uh, you can get your way around the golf course. Um, the second thing I would suggest to him before we move on to anything else is that he should have a checkup with his club professional if he hasn't done already. Um, there's only two things that are really important in, in golf from the technical aspect. Uh, the first of those is a grip um, and the second one is you have to stand over the ball in, a, uh, in, in the right way. Um, the other thing that uh, golfers are al always aware of is the need to have good kit and especially the golf clubs. So I wouldn't recommend to Andy that he um, dashes out to get a new set of clubs because usually that is the least important thing and not as important as the other things that I've just mentioned. So what else did he write about? Because I sent him a note back with a few more questions to get a bit more information. Um, one thing you learn as a medical student, it's hammered into you right from the start, is that the first thing a patient tells you is usually not um, the most valuable. Um, often it's like an opening gambit. Somebody may be too embarrassed or to say what their real problem is or um, may not even know for that matter. So you have to ask the right kind of questions to try and get a bit more information. So what else did I get from Andy? Here we go. Um, he says, I'd like to have enough money to retire so that I could play and practice more. Well, that would definitely help because if he's going to knock 15 shots off his golf handicap, there is definitely, he's definitely going to have to practice some stuff. And having the time to do it will help. Now, the good news is, is that Andy has a part-time job, so that still does you know, leave some time left over. What else do we know? Um, he wants to get his golf handicap down and put some videos on YouTube to show how he did this. Well, this is a wonderful idea, and I'm going to come back to this that in a moment, because I've got a few things to say about that. And one of the questions was, I said, um, what is your biggest fear in making this the change, the change that's going to improve your golf quite dramatically? He says that I will fall flat on my face. Now, I didn't expect that answer, but I'm not surprised either. And I'm going to come back to that as well. And then his final comment 
is a really wonderful one. And he says, can I just say that I have the best wife and family in the world, and generally life is great, but I would like more. We call this uh, an attitude of gratitude, and it's one thing that any of us can do more of, which is going to enrich our lives. Because uh, the way the science works is if, if we are constantly thinking of positive thoughts and the things that we do have rather than the things that we don't have and that other people seem to have, as long as we can concentrate on being grateful for what we do have, this stimulates the production of neurotransmitters that are sometimes called the happy chemicals. And the reverse is true as if we dwell on the more negative stuff. So I like that closing comment. It shows that Andy's a grounded person and he understands that whilst he really wants to be a better golfer, uh, there are some things that are far more important than golf. So um, a little more detail now uh, to Andy. Uh, Andy, I'm talking to you now as well as to everybody else. Your goal is to get your handicap down from 24 to single figures. Uh, that's okay to have in the back of your mind, but if you have that in the front of your mind, you're going to have some rather unsatisfactory days over the next 12 months when you feel that you've not made any progress, because this is not going to happen overnight. And every time you go out and play golf and get a higher score, um, is that going to spoil the way you feel about that day and the next day and maybe even the day after? Um, I give a mention, uh, I've mentioned previously one of the top poker players in the world that I worked with, and his first answer to my first question when I asked him what he wanted, he said he wanted to win a major tournament. And my answer was very much the same, that keep that in the back of your mind, but not the front of your mind. In the front of your mind, I would recommend that you construct some key processes that you can carry out every day. It's like a little tick list of stuff that you can do. And it will take some thought on your part to come up with what some of these little daily steps would be. But just as suggestions, one might be to go to the practice range every day for 45 minutes or an hour or whatever. And if you can do that, then that's fine. You might want to do some exercises to increase your um, subtle, um, your suppleness. Um, you might want to make sure that you're wearing the, the right clothes when you go out to play golf. Because practice, this again is another general point, practice should be as close to the real thing as possible. So that means that when you go to the practice ground, you wear the same clothes and kit that you would normally wear on a round of golf. Those are a few examples of processes. Um, now, what else are we going to say? Let's just looking back at your note. As in a, yeah, we've talked about the goals. Uh, putting some videos on YouTube. Now, the reason why I like this is because this demonstrates commitment. Now, when people think they're going to do something, they might do it. When somebody says to themselves, yes, I'm going to do that this year, then there's a greater chance that they're going to do it. When somebody writes it down, as Andy wrote it down to me, before he's actually even done anything, that's increased his chances of uh, being successful in his goal. Uh, but when you tell another person, like your wife, your partner, your friend, your playing partners at golf, that this is what you're going to do, that really is going to increase your commitment. It'll bring more of these thoughts into your head and what you think about in life is generally what you get. So those are all steps that you can layer to make it more likely that you're going to get to that target. And the final thing is um, when you, you know, if you put something on YouTube when you're going out to the whole world, that is about the most commitment to your cause that you can possibly make. So I think that's a wonderful thing to do. And in fact, it's how I started putting videos on the technical quality of my early stuff. I'm not proud of, uh, but I'm glad that I did it because it made me learn how to make better and better um, little videos. And they're still going to get better still. So Andy, I think that's a really good idea because you know you may not believe it, but people are going to be interested in a chap like you, 65 years old, taking on this challenge. And even if you don't get there, they're not going to care. They're going to applaud you for making the effort. 
Which brings me on to the other thing that you say. His biggest fear is, I will fall flat on my face. Now, it's just amazing how many people say similar kind of words. And I can bore you with a long list of all the musicians and artists and writers and therapists and public speakers, you name it, who are so worried about how other people is going to judge their work, which, of course, is a very personal thing. Some of these people, the very first review they've had has been terrible, and they've just given up. This has happened so often. There's a musician called Vashti, who's the best example. She, she never recorded another song after her first album, and she went walkabout around the world. It was only when she was in Canada many years later that she found that that first album and only album she made is, was, a, was a bestseller in some parts of the world. And she gave it all up. <clears throat> Glad to say she's back, but she gave it up for many years on the basis of one review. So, Andy, don't worry about falling flat on your face. Uh, of course, you're only talking metaphorically, so uh, you're not really going to fall down. There's not going to be any blood on the floor. And you've already said that you understand that in the overall scheme of things, golf is not as important as all the other things uh, that you've got going for you. But this is a um, very human fear, and uh, so many um, artists and creative people have uh, it, it's, it's just stopped them doing what their life's work and their passion is all, is all about it. So see it in that light, Andy. Uh, I will certainly applaud you for whatever you do, because it's more than most people do already. I think you're a winner. So um, I hope that feel, makes you feel better, because I'm sure everybody else will think the same about you as well. Um, it's always better to try new things than just to plod along, you know, living in the comfort zone where you don't, you just get better at doing the same stuff rather than getting a lot better at doing new things too. So just to summarize, uh, I've mentioned the importance of going to your pro club professional to make sure that you're holding the club right. I've mentioned the importance of having your professional check that you're standing over the ball right because those are the building blocks of good golf swing. Um, the most important thing that I think I can say in cutting shots off is to, for the first few months at least, focus on your short game. It's what counts from 100 yards in that makes all the difference. Uh, I work on the golf tours and the, I've seen the best players in the world. <clears throat> they get into all kinds of trouble, but the difference between them and us is that they know how to get out of trouble, often not losing any shots. And that is because they have wonderful, magical short games. And you can as well. It doesn't require strength. It requires practice and good visualization skills and, and, and building and your confidence will build. Um, so once you've uh, improved your short game, the other thing is to focus on your driving, driving off the tee to uh, keep yourself out of trouble uh, and because that will take uh, the pressure off the rest of your game. So there are some ideas for you to try, Andy, and I wish you the very best of luck. And I'm sure you're going to keep in touch so that we can let everybody know how you get on. And we definitely look forward to seeing some videos on YouTube. And for those of you who don't play golf, um, I'm sure that you can make some parallels. You can join the dots together on how you could use some of the advice that I've given to Andy <clears throat> with um, helping you uh, with your uh, challenges and uh, the barriers to the success that you want and deserve. And, uh, and again, to end on a high note, Andy, I'm um, you know glad that uh, you took up this challenge and that you uh, had this attitude of gratitude about uh, where you are in life already, and that's going to help so much. So that's enough for this week. Um, see you all again soon. In the meantime, have an absolutely uh, wonderful life. Thank you.